In 2092, humanity has conquered mortality through the endless renewal of cells. The world watches in fascination as the 118-year-old Nemo Nobody, the last mortal on Earth, edges toward death. No record can be found of his past, and his memories are confused. So Dr. Feldhan, a psychiatrist, uses hypnosis to help Nemo remember his life. Curious to know about the world before quasi-immortality, a journalist also interviews Nemo, whose recollections primarily come from three points in his life, age 9, age 15, and age 34. Nemo makes contradictory statements, describing events from his past as having unfolded in multiple different ways, and explains that before birth, children remember everything that will happen in their lives. At the moment of conception, the angels of oblivion erase the children's memories, but he says the angels forgot about him, allowing him to remember different possible futures for himself. At age 9, after his parents' divorce, Nemo says he was forced to choose whether to leave with his mother or stay with his father, and he describes what happened, both when he managed to catch and board his mother's train at the last second, and when he failed to do so and was left behind. Life with his mother Nemo moves with his mother to Montreal. When he is a rebellious teenager, a new girl, Anna, comes to his school, and he is immediately smitten. One day at the beach, Anna asks if Nemo would like to swim with her and her friends. He insults her friends, and they hardly see each other again. In an alternate timeline, Nemo admits to Anna that he cannot swim, and the two spend time together. Nemo learns that Anna is the daughter of his mother's new boyfriend, and then husband, Harry and the step-siblings begin an affair, pledging their lives to one another. When Harry and Nemo's mother get divorced, Anna goes to New York with her father, and the teenagers lose touch. Years later, Nemo, who still hopes to someday see Anna again, works as a pool cleaner. One day, he and Anna pass at a train station, and the pair immediately recognize each other. After a passionate reunion, and announces she is not ready to immediately resume the relationship. She gives Nemo her number and asks him to call her in two days and meet at a lighthouse in a local park. But he loses her phone number when a sudden downpour makes her note illegible. Nemo waits at the lighthouse every day, but Anna does not come. In one possible life, Anna and Nemo are married with children. Nemo works at a television studio, narrating educational videos. One evening while returning home, he hits a bird, loses control of his car, plummets into a lake, and drowns. Life with his father Nemo stays in England with his father, who later becomes disabled. As a teenager, he works in a shop and spends his free time writing a science fiction story about a journey to Mars. At a school dance, he meets Elise and falls in love. A few days later, he goes to her house and sees her with her 22-year-old boyfriend. Frustrated, Nemo speeds away on his motorcycle, has an accident, and is hospitalized in a vegetative state. What am I doing here? Though he cannot move or speak, he can perceive the world through his senses and detects his parents' reunion at his bedside. He imagines his fingers are on the keyboard of his typewriter and continues to work on his story. In another timeline, Nemo speaks with Elise at her house. She tells him that she is in love with her boyfriend, Stefano, even though she knows he does not love her. But Nemo does not back down. He keeps assuring her of his feelings, and Alice eventually gives in. A few years later, she and Nemo get married. In one version of this timeline, Elise dies on their wedding day in an explosion. Nemo, in a reality mirroring his sci-fi story, takes her ashes to Mars and spreads them on the planet's surface which he had promised to do when they were teenagers. Aboard the spacecraft on the way back to Earth, he meets Anna, but before they can say much to each other, the ship is destroyed by asteroids. In another version, as an adult, Nemo works at the same television studio as he does in the timeline where he married Anna, and one of his co-workers drowns in the lake. The co-worker's widow is Anna, whom Nemo feels he has seen before. Another timeline has Nemo and Elise married, with three children, but unhappy as Elise suffers from borderline personality disorder and chronic depression. She has attacks of hysteria, and despite Nemo's attempts to save their marriage, ultimately leaves him to pursue Stefano. Alternately, after being rejected by Elise, teenage Nemo resolves to marry the first girl who dances with him at the next school dance, who turns out to be Jean. 
Though they marry and have two sons, and he becomes rich, Nemo grows unhappy and bored. So he puts all of his assets in Jean's name and leaves his family. Now, making all of his decisions randomly via coin toss, he goes to the airport and tells a chauffeur that he is Daniel Jones, the man the chauffeur is waiting for. He is taken to a hotel, where he is murdered while taking a bath, and his body is dumped in the woods by the assassins, who question whether they have killed the right man, as well as the many paths that Nemo's life could take or has taken. Adult Nemo is also seen to repeatedly awaken in an artificial, surrealistic environment dominated by argyle patterns. Following clues that he finds scattered throughout this world, he arrives at a dilapidated house where he finds a DVD player hooked up to a television. In a strangely interactive video, 34-year-old Nemo is told by 118-year-old Nemo that this is a universe where Nemo nobody was never born, and his consciousness is stuck in some sort of limbo. The old Nemo states that he is experiencing the story from the end, and the adult Nemo must stay alive until 5.50 a.m. on February 12, 2092. Epilogue Before his death, old Nemo tells the journalist that neither of them exist. They are figments of the imagination of nine-year-old Nemo at the train station, as he struggles to choose between his parents. This is an impossible decision, but he knows it will define his life from then on. So the young boy is trying to determine which is the correct choice by tracing various potential outcomes of each. Ultimately, he takes a third option. He leaves both parents and runs away towards an unknown future. On his deathbed, Nemo recalls a reunion with Anna at the lighthouse. The calculated time of his death arrives, and his last word, Anna, is broadcast to the world. The universe ceases to expand and begins to contract. The flow of time having reversed, old Nemo comes back to life and begins to cackle joyously. The other dead Nemos also come back to life, and Nemo's parents get back together. Nine-year-old Nemo reverse runs to nine-year-old Anna and reverse skips rocks with her.